Welcome back to my channel. How have you all been? I know it's been a long time. I hope that your New Year's and your holiday season were excellent and I'm glad that you're here to hang out with me again. Uh, I have some interesting content for you, a little bit surprising. I am no longer going to be doing the Odin Project and I'm going to tell you why right now. So. The project that you guys are probably waiting on is the weather app. And I can tell you, I did it, sort of. Um, but partway through, I sort of had a change of heart. So let me tell you about it. All right, we're here at my code. This is the weather app. Partway through uh, coding the weather app on Twitch, I got a thousand followers over on Twitch. And I promised everybody that when that happened, I would start coding a Twitch bot. And so I had to drop the weather app and start doing that. But to be fair, when I started doing the Twitch bot, I was having way more fun. <laughs> it's okay, baby boy. I was having way more fun and I was learning all of the things that you're supposed to learn from the top weather app better by doing them in the Twitch bot. You guys can't see this, but Trash Puppy is right here next to me. Hey, baby boy. <laughs> All right, so let's go over the weather app because I know a lot of you are here for the top content. The weather app, um, the point of the weather app is to teach you about asynchronous coding. And asynchronous coding um, basically just means that you can write code so that while you're waiting for a resource that you're going to use in your code, uh, the rest of your code doesn't stop. It can keep working and processing things while you're waiting on your response for that resource. So for this app, uh, we're, we also learn how to use an API. And when you use an API, you need asynchronous coding. So that's the main idea. Or top, what they do is they have you get an API key from open weather, openweathermap.org, I think it is. So you go get your own uh, API key, which is a unique identifier so that when you make a request, <laughs> no, oh no, Loki. So that when you make a request to the API, um, they know who you are and they know that you are allowed to have their data. That's basically the idea. Sorry, it's the mail. <laughs> okay, so once you get your API key, you use it in your code. As you can see here, here, let me find it specifically. A good place. I think I put mine into api.js. Yeah, there you go. So once you get your API key from openweathermap.org, and that can take a day to get, just so you know. Um, no. You use it in an asynchronous part of your code to get their data and be able to display it to your user. So the idea is that the user puts in a city they want to see the weather for. Let's do, I don't know, Moscow. Actually, I just did a good one. New Orleans. So when they request the city, you give them the weather. Mine's a little fucked up, okay, it doesn't look great, and we'll go over that, but that's the main idea. So once you get your API, you use it in a fetch, um, in a fetch function like this, and basically that goes to their server, it asks for the data that you requested, it uses your API key, um, so that the server knows that you're allowed to request that data. And then what the fetch is doing is it's waiting for your response. So without fetch, if I tried to do this, uh, if I tried to get the data, the rest of my code would just stop. But with fetch, what it allows it to do is the rest of your code can keep executing um, while this is waiting on the response. Once it gets the response, you use this dot then function to tell it what to do with the response. So. That's, that's basically what you learn from this app. Um, I got a lot of that part done. As you can see, this basically, you know, I got the data, I put it in a big object, and then I just pick and choose what I need from it. 
The rest that I half-assed here, as you can see, is the styling. Guys, I'm sorry. I just don't care about styling anymore, and that's just the truth of it. But I want to go over this with you and break down why I sort of gave up on this project, because I think there are some lessons to be learned here. So first, let's go over the things that went well. Writing the fetch was actually probably the easiest part. Um, the downside to that is that it was so easy, I don't think I fully grasped asynchronous code once I was able to write the fetch. So I sort of, I think that's kind of a bad thing because asynchronous code is a difficult subject and I don't think even, okay, so even though Top goes over it pretty well, uh, leading up to this project, the project itself is not good for teaching it to you. Uh, you don't really see how it's helping your code, um, like the flow of your code, how it's not causing any disruptions while it's waiting for data and whatnot. And I think that's what they're trying to teach you, but it just doesn't come across very well because it's just so easy to write a fetch thing. Um, but other than that, the other thing that went well, I would say, actually, that's it. <laughs> um, let's go over what didn't go well, because this is really where it gets interesting. Um, so first of all, the small points. The API itself, openweathermap.org, the data that they hand back to you is a little confusing. So they give it back to you in like a massive, um, it's a massive JSON object, and then you sort of parse through it, and you try to pick and choose the stuff, the, the stuff that you want to display to the user. So an example of how this wasn't going well for me is with, I think it was in the conditions. So if you look over here, <laughs> precipitation right now is nan, not a number, inches per hour. And the nan is not important, what's important is when I was doing this precipitation part with the inches per hour, the data that they handed me, the um, how they had it formatted was like three inches per H. So I spent like hours trying to figure out why when I asked it for inches per hour, it was not working. It took me so freaking long to figure out that they just formatted it to say inches per H. <laughs> That's just me maybe, but like, it did not make sense. The other thing that I didn't really like about working with this API is that they have tiers of API keys that you can get. So obviously Top has you get a free API key. You don't have to pay anything, but they have other API keys that you can pay for that will give you more data when you ask for it. So the problem that ended up happening with me is that I couldn't, there wasn't good documentation, oops, um, for which API key I had access to. So anytime I got confused about, you know, anytime I wanted to go look at the documentation to figure out how to use their API, I would have to re-figure out which API I had access to. So it was just, the service itself is kind of messy and not very clearly documented which was super irritating and probably part of the reason that I stopped caring about this project. Um, so those are the small things that went wrong, but this is the major thing that went wrong for me. So in top, when they teach you about EP API, they go over security a little bit. Basically they say, when you get an I API key, you need to keep it safe. They don't really go into why, and they don't tell you how to keep it safe. So while I was streaming this, like live streaming this project, I was really nervous about my API key. I didn't want to release it. I didn't want to accidentally share it on my screen or whatever, but I didn't know what to do. And one thing that ticked me off a little about this project is that Top doesn't tell you how to secure your key. They just say, keep it safe, but they don't tell you how. Luckily for me, I had a lot of good people in the Twitch chat helping me out. So what I ended up doing was writing, what I ended up doing was writing this key.js module. And you can see that it's like, 
how would you say, dark compared to these other ones, that's because it is in my dot get ignore. And what that means is that um, I've told GitHub to ignore this file so that when I push it up to my, to my uh, remote repository, it doesn't get pushed up there. All this file contains is a variable called key that is my API key in plain text. And it, I export the key from key.js and I use it in the code. So if you look over here, this is me importing my key. And when I use it to build the URL to fetch the data, I just use it as a variable. The key itself is a string of like a bunch of gobbledygook letters and crap. So I was kind of ticked off about that because I was feeling really vulnerable on, on stream. Granted, top the API that you're using is free, so it's not like if your API key gets hacked or whatever, you're gonna lose money. But it's just like, it's bad practice to have your API key in plain text in your code. And that's essentially what they have you do because they don't give you any tools to um, protect it. And I wanna go over why that's serious. So the reason API key should be secure is that some API keys need to be paid for um, and they access, if you don't pay for an API key and you steal an API key, you can access data that you should not have access to. Now, sometimes that just means you're getting over a paywall if you're like a hacker that's stolen some API key. But other times that means that, you know, maybe you have a development environment and your API key is for development data only. That person who stole that key can get can ask for that data without having legitimate like they're not an authenticated legitimate user of that data if that makes sense so that's why you want to keep these things safe and if you go on github i bet you you could find a bunch of major projects where the api keys are in plain text so that's that's a big thing uh top barely covers that so i wanted to go over that with you guys but i also wanted to get i also wanted to talk about dot env if you don't, so how I did it is not how people normally do it, um, it at like companies and stuff. Dot env, which is spelled like this, dot env, is a dependent a dependency that you can install into your environment. And essentially, what it does is exactly what I did. You have a dot env file, um, just like this. That's literally all it's called. You ignore it in the git ignore, and in the .env file, you have all of your um, environmental variables. Just like I did with the key, they're just printed there. Um, but .env is a little more complex than what I did because I'm just importing a variable. When you use .env, this is how you import it um, because it's essentially, it has its own functions that come with it. So you import it like this, and then you add this dot env dot or yeah dot env dot config thing, and basically what you've done is now you can use those variables that are in your dot env in your key. So over here it would look like this instead of me using key, it would I think it's process dot env dot whatever variable you named it in the dot env. So I think when I was using it I used key. So that's a really common um, dependency to see in, in the workplace, is what I hear anyways, but that's essentially all it does. And you can achieve the same thing uh, with just a module. Anyway, so that was the weather app. I wasn't super happy about it, but when I started coding the Twitch bot, I ended up learning a lot of this much better. So I wanna make a second video about the Twitch bot and how doing your own projects can really be of benefit. So look for part two. I know this hasn't been very long, but I wanted to get this out there for you guys because I have not forgotten about you. I know it feels like that, <laughs> but I promise I haven't. I've just been busy. So I'll try to get part two out as quick as possible. Other than that, I'm always on Twitch, pretty much every day. Uh, we're making some big changes around there. But if you wanna see live coding, if you wanna see me work on the Twitch bot, if you wanna come ask questions, 
definitely hit me up at Twitch. I'm there almost every weekday, guys. Other than that, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you enjoyed my video and I will see you very soon with part two, which will be all about the Twitch bot. All right, thanks guys. See ya. Any tips for a noob? It's something I've been wanting to dive into, just don't know where I should start. Okay, this is the pro tip. Every time someone comes in and says something like this or asks, code a project that you would use, such as Titty's Bot. This is Titty's Bot, Trash Bot. This is a passion project and I'm having so much fun and I'm learning a lot. That's, that's, that's what you do.